Hello friends, welcome to our channel Instrument Calibration. In this video, I will discuss about different terminology of control system. So, if you do not want to miss any informative video like this in future, then please subscribe this channel, and press bell icon to get notification, when we post new video on the channel. In this video, you will learn What is open loop control system, and what is closed loop control system? Secondly, you will learn about different controller terminology. And finally, I am going to explain, what are the functions of different components in closed loop control system. First of all, let's learn, what is open loop control system. Open loop control system is manual control of a device or system. Open loop control system has no feedback, and it cannot correct for unwanted disturbances, and consequently, it is non-regulating. A hand valve is good example of this. Examples of open loop controls are, systems that use timers, for example, a laundry machine with wash, rinse, and spin cycles. In addition to this, bottle filling station controlled by a PLC is another example of open loop control system. As you can see from the diagram that, when valve V2 is closed, amount flow out is equal to amount of flow in. And, when valve V2 is opened, amount of flow out is not equal to amount of flow in. Now, let's learn, what is closed loop control system? Closed loop control system is automatic control of a device or system, and it is self-regulating. And it uses negative feedback for stabilization and corrections of unwanted disturbances. Closed loop control system may have one of the three types of feedback control. First method is negative feedback. Second method is positive feedback. And third method is oscillation type feedback. In most systems, negative feedback is the preferred method, because it provides corrective action to stabilize a process, when there are unforeseen or non-controllable disturbances to the system. In this section, we will learn about different controller terminology such as, process variable, set point, error signal, and controller modes. Let's start with process variable which is also known as PV. Process variable is physical variable being measured such as pressure, flow, level, temperature etc. Secondly, set point is the desired quantity or value of the product of the process in automatic control. And error signal is the difference between process variable and set point signals. Direct action occurs, when process variable value is greater than set point value. And reverse action occurs, when set point value is greater than process variable value. Last but not least, controller mode defines the proportional band function, the integral function, and the derivative function for a P controller, P plus I controller, and a P plus I plus D controller. Now, let's learn, functions of each components in closed loop control system. First of all, what is the function of controller in closed loop control system? Controller is heart of closed loop system, and it performs three different functions. Firstly, controller compares the process variable signal to the set point signal, and produces an error signal. Secondly, it manipulates the error signal through its P, I, and D functions. Lastly, it outputs a signal to drive the process in a direction to make the error signal zero, thus making PV equals SP. Now, let's learn, what flow control element function in this loop. Flow control element is a mechanical device that physically changes a process in response to a change in the control system set point. Pneumatic control valve, motorized control valve, and variable speed pumps are the examples of flow control element. Another important component is measurement instrument. Measurement instrument measures the process variable in closed loop control system. Flow indicator transmitter, level indicator transmitter, pressure indicator transmitter, and temperature indicator transmitter are the example of measurement instrument. Lastly, let's learn what is the process disturbance and what are the major causes of process disturbance. 
First major reason of process disturbance is supply load changes. A change in materials or energy supplied to a process are the examples of supply load change. Another major reason which cause process disturbance is a demand load changes. This caused by a change in materials or energy leaving a process. Process is also disturbed by sudden set point increment or decrement. And final major cause of process disturbance is ambient variable changes. For example, temperature changes from hot to freezing conditions. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions about this video, please ask your questions in comment box. And if you think our content is informative for you, then please like and share this video with your friends.